Hello, my name is Omar Awan, and I'm an associate professor of radiology at the University of Maryland. Today, I'd like to discuss my approach to evaluating an MRI examination of the elbow. And the elbow can be sort of an intimidating joint to review and understand if you haven't seen that many elbows. But once you have a systematic, methodical approach to the elbow, evaluation becomes very easy and straightforward. So what I initially do is I look at the T2 fat set weighted coronal image through the elbow. And what I'm looking at first is I'm assessing the marrow. I'm looking to see if there's any marrow edema um, about the osseous structures. We have the distal humerus, the supracondylar aspect of the humerus. We have the uh, radiocapitellar joint right here. And then we have the trochlear ulnar joint right here. We want to assess to see if there's any marrow edema or subchondral marrow edema to suggest uh, osteoarthritis. We want to look for spurring, joint space loss. We want to look at the underlying articular cartilage to see if there's any focal chondral defects. Uh, the cartilage is this gray intermediate signal right here. We're looking to see if there's any 2-2 hyperintense signal to suggest partial or full thickness chondral defects. We're looking to see if there's any joint effusion distending the joints here along the radiocapitellar and trochlear ulnar joints. So far I see no joint effusion. I see no focal chondral defect. What I am seeing is some maybe minimal marrow edema, sort of subtle patchy marrow edema along the olecranon process right where the triceps tendon is inserting. So there may be some minimal marrow edema there, but otherwise the marrow signal intensity is within normal limits here. And as you can imagine, the marrow is uh, dark because we've satted out the fat on this T2 fat sat weighted image. So we expect the marrow to be nice and dark here on the T2 fat sat weighted image. The other structures I'm going to look at on the coronal image, which are key um, um, on the coronal image, is this structure here, this dark black hypointense structure here coming in and inserting onto the medial epicondyle. This is the common flexor tendon origin. Okay, This should be nice, black, thin, and hypointense, and it should insert completely onto the medial epicondyle right here. If this tendon becomes thickened, there's some heterogeneous signal within it, or there's maybe partial tearing with T2 hyperintense signal within the substance of the tendon. That can be seen in the setting of medial epicondylitis or golfer's elbow. Okay, These can completely tear as well, but more commonly you'll see tendinosis uh, and partial tearing of this common flexor tendon um, suggestive of medial epicondylitis or golfer's elbow. Here, this is a totally normal tendon. On the flip side, on the lateral side, you have the common extensor tendon that inserts right here onto the lateral epicondyle right here. This is also nice and dark and hypointense. There's no thickening. There's no T2 hyperintense signal to suggest partial tearing or full thickness tear. Uh, if there were tendinosis or thickening or intermediate signal or partial tearing, that would be consistent with lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. Okay, We don't see that here. The common extensor tendon gives rise to many of the muscles and tendons about the elbow, like the extensor carpi radialis longus, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor carpi ulnaris, etc. The common flexor tendon origin gives rise to many muscles like the pronator teres, palmaris longus, flexor digitorum superficialis, etc. Okay? I want to next turn to some of the ligaments that are important in the elbow, which we can also see on the coronal image. And I'll start right here along the medial side, which this ligament right here, which is, you know, nice and hypointense here. It goes from the medial epicondyle and inserts onto the sublime tubercle of the coronoid process of the ulna here. This is the ulnar collateral ligament. Okay, this is the primary restraint against valgus stress in the elbow. It's the primary restraint against valgus stress in the elbow. Okay, It has three bands. It has an anterior, posterior, and transverse band. The anterior band is functionally the most important band for stability. This should be nice, thin, and hypointense. If we see T2 hyperintense signal within it, it could be partially torn or completely torn. Notice that we do have some thickening proximally, maybe some intermediate signal. This may be suggestive of a chronic sprain of the proximal fibers of the ulnar collateral ligament. However, it's not torn. We can see its insertion along the uh, proximal ulna and along the medial epicondyle. Okay, so this is the ulnar collateral ligament. That's the main ligament structure along the medial aspect of the elbow. If we turn to the lateral aspect of the elbow, I want to point your attention to two different structures. One is right here, this ligament that's coming in right here, starting from the lateral epicondyle, and then it kind of curves and inserts right here along the supinator crest of the ulna. This is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament, okay? This is the lateral ulnar collateral ligament. This is the uh, primary restraint against posterior lateral instability. Primary restraint against posterior lateral instability. Again, it's intact, 
Okay, an arthrogram will delineate this a little bit better, but we don't see any T2 hyperantide signals that suggest partial tearing or full thickness tearing. Okay, as we go a little bit more anteriorly, we're going to start to see the radial collateral ligament, which starts here along the lateral epicondyle, and it starts actually, it blends actually with the annular ligament, the annular ligament, which is this ligament, which is hard to see, but it wraps around the radial head and neck. Um, this is the primary restraint against varus stress. The primary restraint against varus stress about the elbow. Okay, and again, we don't see any T2 hyperintense signal within it to suggest tearing. The radial collateral ligament, for the most part, looks like it's intact. Okay, um, those are the major ligament structures about the lateral aspect of the elbow that we assess for. So medially, we're looking at the ulnar collateral ligament. Laterally, we're looking at mainly the radial collateral ligament and the lateral ulnar collateral ligament and the annular ligament if we can see it. Sometimes we can see it better on an axial uh, weighted image through the elbow. Okay, um, and that's kind of my approach to looking at the coronal T2 fat set. I then turn to the coronal T1 T1 weighted image <clears throat> just to assess the marrow. I want to make sure that there's no hypointense fracture line to suggest an acute fracture. I want to make sure that there's no evidence of avascular necrosis, no serpiginous geographic signal abnormality to suggest AVN or avascular necrosis. I also want to assess the marrow process to make sure that there's no T1 iso-intense to muscle or T1 hypo-intense signal to muscle within the bone to suggest a marrow uh, proliferative or marrow replacing process, which I don't see here. Okay, and then you can look at the muscular bulk to make sure that there's no atrophy, there's no T1 hyperintense signal within the muscle to suggest muscular atrophy as well. Okay, so I'm taking a look at that right here. I then turn to the sagittal images, and this the sagittals are very good to assess, number one, if there's a joint effusion here, this is the anterior fat pad of the uh, elbow, this is the posterior fat pad, this is just physiologic fluid within the joint space, so no large joint effusion here. Again, this is the radiocapitellar joint, this is the trochlear ulnar joint. Um, this is the triceps tendon right here, okay, concerning onto the olecranon. You can assess that here. There are some striations within it, but that's okay because you have a medial, lateral, and long head of the triceps tendon all coming together and inserting onto the olecranon. There may be some minimal tendinosis. There is some intermediate signal here along its insertion because we did see some faint marrow. Even there may be some minimal tendinosis of the, of the uh, triceps tendon, or it could just be within normal limits depending on your interpretation. Um, so that's essentially what I look at on the sagittal view. I'll turn to the T1 as well, just to kind of look at the marrow again. Look at the radiocapitellar joint, the uh, the chondral surfaces. I do want to point your attention to this area right here along the posterior lateral capitellum, which lacks articular cartilage. This is not an osteochondral defect. This is a normal variant called the pseudo defect of the capitellum. This is a normal area that we see that's denuded of articular cartilage, not to be confused with an osteochondral defect, okay? Just a normal structure that we see in everyone. You can see that beautifully on the sagittal T1 weighted image through the elbow. I then turn to the axial T2 fat sat weighted images through the elbow, and I'm going to assess a couple structures. I'm going to start by looking at the marrow again, just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to look at the olecranon. This is the triceps tendon right here. It's going to insert right here onto the olecranon. Okay. I'm going to assess, this is the biceps muscle right here. This is the biceps tendon, this black hypo-intense structure. It's going to insert onto the radial tuberosity right there. It's normal. It's totally normal. This is the biceps tendon. This area right here sort of uh, adjacent to the biceps tendon, which is hypotes, is the lacertus fibrosis or the bicipital aponeurosis. This is the structure that determines how much retraction of the biceps tendon there is when there's a biceps tear. Okay, that's also intact. This muscle here is the brachialis. This is, and this uh, Hypo-intense structure is the tendon. This is going to start onto the ulnar tuberosity. Right there, it's intact. So that's the ulnar, that's the brachialis. It's starting onto the ulnar tuberosity. The biceps, it starts onto the radial tuberosity. And then the triceps, it starts onto the olecranon process of the ulna. Okay? I also want to assess the neurovascular structures. This here is the median nerve. It's medial. Okay? And it's going to come right here, and it's going to course a little bit anteriorly, along with the... Uh, the brachial vasculature. Okay, this is the median nerve. Notice that it's nice and normal, no T2 hyperintense signal. This structure here is going to be the ulnar nerve. It's going to course right here into the cubital tunnel. Okay, this is this is this is the cubital tunnel here. It can be entrapped here and result in cubital tunnel syndrome. 
Okay, it's bounded here by the medial epicondyle and then the um, cubital tunnel retinaculum right here. Notice that there's a normal appearance of the ulnar nerve. There's no enlargement or T2 hypertense signal to suggest ulnar neuritis within the cubital tunnel. You can have accessory muscles here, like the Anconis epitrochlearis, that uh, impinge the ulnar nerve. We don't see that muscle here. This is the normal uh, Anconis muscle right here. You should see no muscle here along the medial side at the level of the cubital tunnel, and we don't. Okay, so that's, we talked about the median nerve, which is right here, the ulnar nerve right here, and then the radial nerve is harder to see, but it's this structure right here between the brachialis and the brachioradialis muscle. This is the brachioradialis, this is the brachialis, this structure here is the radial nerve, and as of course it divides into a superficial and deep component. The deep component right here pierces a supinator muscle right here. Okay, it'll eventually become the posterior interosseous nerve, but this is the deep branch of the radial nerve, superficial branch right here. We can trace it all the way back up here, okay? You have various entrapment syndromes of the radial nerve, median nerve, ulnar nerve that we're not going to get into for the purposes of this conversation. <clears throat> but uh, those do exist as well. You also want to assess the, muscu the muscle. These are all the muscles here. This is the brachioradialis, brachialis here. You have part of the pronator teres coming in here, uh, the supinator muscle right here, many of the accessor muscles here, the flexor compartment right here. You want to make sure there's, there's no T2 hyperintense signal that suggests intramuscular edema, like a contusion or a muscular strain, and I don't see that. The muscle looks normal on this view. Okay. I'm going to turn to the T1 weighted images to make sure that the muscular bulk is normal, that there's no T1 hypertest signal to suggest muscular atrophy, and everything looks good. Okay, the vascular flow voids are maintained as well. Um, and, and that's essentially it. That's my evaluation for um, MRI examination of the elbow. I hope that has helped you, and thank you so much for your attention.